What's up guys? Got a great video blog for you. I'm gonna talk about fat burning and the supplements we can throw into our fat burning arsenal. Got an email I want to touch base on. It comes from Kevin. He's out in Baltimore, Maryland. TJ, I want to start off by saying thank you for the time and effort you have put into your website and the contribution that you have made on myself and your viewers. My name is Kevin from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a 32-year-old business professional and I've been following your site for some time now. I'm currently 210 pounds, but would like to get down to around 185, 190 pounds. This isn't my first time trying to lose weight and the last time that I tried, I was using a lot of fat burning pills and supplements. To be honest, I didn't feel too good throughout the day and I was taking those um, so let me, oh sorry, uh, let's see, to be honest, I didn't feel too good throughout the day when I was taking those supplements, so eventually I cut them out. Now everywhere I go, I can't help but see the countless fat burning ads all around me, so to get to the point here, I'm curious to hear your take on fat burners. A response to my question would be great, thank you very much, Kevin. Kevin man, that's a great question, it's a really great question. Um, I think we all can relate to the fact that we see and hear about all these different diet craze, you know, lose two inches here, lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Um, this new workout supplement or this new fat burning supplement is coming out on the market. You got to try it. Like there's all these different fads, right? And, um, to address the reason why you weren't feeling too well, um, it could be a number of factors, but my guess, you know, you were probably taking, I won't, I won't mention any, I mean, well, I guess it doesn't matter, but like a lot of hydroxy cut supplements. Um, I mean, that's really the only thing, only one I'm really familiar with to a certain degree. But a lot of those, those bigger um, companies, they, they make these fat burning supplements and they just throw in a bunch of ingredients. You know, this helps, this helps, this helps, this helps. Throw it into a capsule and you take it. And that never allows you to really get a great understanding of what's actually working. You know what I mean? Um, if you, if you um, kind of dissect the ingredient list and then were to take it one by one, you'd have a better understanding of what is actually happening and the effects it has on your body. So my guess, Kevin, is that one of those ingredients or two or three of those ingredients out of the you know, laundry list of 20, 30 ingredients in those fat burning supplements, those were probably just giving you uh, a, a rough time, you know. They put a lot of thermogenic type qualities in those ingredients, elevating your heart rate, and it's uncomfortable. Your, your heart rate's high, your overall core temperature, your body temperature throughout the day is elevated as well, and so that's uncomfortable. You know, it's kind of like sitting in a sauna all day. If you're at desk, like, I mean, you said you're a business professional, I'm assuming you have an office or a desk, cubicle, whatever it may be, and you're sitting there feeling warm all the time, you know, that, that's uncomfortable for anybody. So um, that, it's a great point. I'm sure you're not the only person experiencing that. So my advice here, guys, how I want to approach this is I want to provide you guys a, an overview, a holistic overview of how we can kind of build our own fat burner, kind of kind of dissect some ingredients that we can throw into our arsenal in terms of what is effective when trying to burn fat, okay? Before I jump into this, I wanna make it very, very, very clear, very evident that I strongly advise you guys to consult a physician or a doctor before utilizing any of these supplements. They're all natural, they're all healthy, but it's all relevant or all relative to the individual, right? If a person has a bad kidney, they shouldn't be taking this or this or this. And you don't know that until you consult a doctor. So please be responsible, do the research. You know, I, you know, your guys' best interests are my best interests. I really wanna help you guys, um, not just improve in the vanity of the mirror, but internal health as well. So please be responsible and mature enough to at least consult a physician before utilizing any new supplements. And that doesn't, that doesn't just go for, you know, kind of these, these fat burning ingredients I'm going to list. Anything I say at any time, if you don't know, or if you're not confident, definitely seek a physician, get another opinion. Nothing wrong with that. Um, let's see, let's jump into it guys. Let's jump in. Uh, let me get my screen going on my computer here. 
All right, what are some, some fat burning elements that we can cover? I'm gonna be talking about fat releasers. I'm gonna be talking about calorie burners. I'm gonna be talking about fat transporters, fat stoppers, and then gene activators. And I'll dive into each one of these and we'll get into greater detail, okay? So let's jump into the first one, fat releasers. What happens is when our, our body stores fat into cells, okay? These fat cells are called adipocytes, okay? Our fat cells are called adipocytes. And what our goal here is, is to decrease the size of these adipocytes or these fat cells, I'll just call them fat cells. We want to decrease the size of these fat cells because the larger those fat cells, well, you guess it, the greater amount of fat they can store. So our overall goal is to keep those very small, okay? But when they're filled up, how do we get rid of the fat that's in these cells? We can utilize fat releasers, okay? And an example of the fat releasers, um, two main examples would be caffeine and another supplement called Yohimbine, okay? Caffeine is going to, uh, the main benefit is gonna help free up the fat in the cell. And normally our body is gonna go through what happens, the process naturally on a normal circumstance or a normal basis, a nucleotide, adenosine, I wanna make sure I pronounce that correctly, nucleotide adenosine. It binds to our fat receptors and it blocks off the release of fat. So it's a bad thing. It, it basically is like a bodyguard outside the door of our fat warehouse, if you will. And what caffeine does, it comes in, beats up that bodyguard and it, it, it activates the, the body to release this fat out of our cells. It allows it to release out of there, okay? So it replaces that bodyguard and, and it gives, you know, a free pass and get out of here, okay? Now, Yohimbine works in the same way. And um, let me go back to caffeine. When, when you're taking caffeine, guys, there's the, the daily recommended um, dosage but you can take 200, 400 milligrams throughout the day, two, three times a day. You know, do it in between meals and specifically right before your workout. Um, all of these supplements that I list, you're gonna wanna take them before your workout, 30 to 60 minutes before. It's gonna help elevate the, the overall effectiveness of it. So keep that in the back pocket. Um, like I said, 200, 400 milligrams of caffeine, two, three times a day in between meals and, and you'll be good to go. Obviously don't take it at nighttime before bed because you're gonna be up all night. So let's move on to the next one, Yohimbine, okay? Another fat releaser. What Yohimbine is, it's an extract from a West African tree bark. Um, essentially, what it does is the same exact thing as caffeine. It acts in the same exact way. There's just a slightly different mechanism in the overall process, but it does the same thing in terms of activating the release of fat out of those cells, okay? So Yohimbine is great. As I mentioned before though, this, this one specifically, if you guys have liver, kidney, intestinal, heart, uh, if you're pregnant, you're breastfeeding, if you're currently in that state of, of bad health or you just have a problem when you're pregnant, that's obviously not bad health, but if you're in that state of health, don't take Yohimbine. Also consult the doctor, can't stress that enough. Um, in terms of how much to take of Yohimbine, 5 to 20 milligrams two to three times a day, and then take one of those dosages 30 to 60 minutes before your workout. Let's move on to the next one. As mentioned, those are our fat releasers. Now we're gonna talk about the calorie burners. Now, this is kind of step two in the fat burning process where the fat, um, the fat releasers, you know, our cells stored our cells store in fat, now we gave it permission to release, and now the fat releases. Now we want to start to burn that fat that's been released. Green tea extract and capsaicin are two great ingredients that are going to help burn that fat that's released. In terms of green tea extract, this is going to help aid in the overall burning of calories throughout the day. Okay, What it does is it's essentially a very, very powerful antioxidant. And it also has... 
a, 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 it's it's considered a cat a cat ah, a catechin okay a catechin and I don't know why that's such a tongue twister a catechin okay um, and the long word I'm, I'm gonna attempt this but it's an epigallocatechin gallate also known as EGCG it's a catechin or a antioxidant that's extremely powerful it inhibits an enzyme that also enhances the calorie burning effect okay that I mean that's just a really really fancy way an overcomplicated way of me saying it helps increase your body's ability to burn calories throughout the day okay so utilize green tea extract you want to look for green teas that have that EGCG um, content in it um, about 500 to 1000 milligrams throughout the day um, two to three times a day and of course take it 30 60 minutes before your your workout in addition to that we have capsaicin and capsaicin is it, it's a, a natural plant chemical from like spicy peppers um, it has a thermogenic effect you know when you eat something spicy and hot your internal core temperature elevates you can feel yourself getting hot and warm that is your body starting to burn more calories and so capsaicin utilizes that process and puts it into pill form uh, powder form whatever else is out there for him. Um, capsaicin, what, so the process that happens is that thermogenic effect, essentially what happens, it, as I mentioned, increases your temperature, elevating our epinephrine levels. Now, there was a study done by Japanese researchers that demonstrated that there is a 30% calorie expenditure when supplementing with capsaicin. Me, you know, the overall calorie burn throughout the day was increased by 30% when taking capsaicin two or three times a day. So that, that's absolutely a great supplement to utilize. Now, in terms of how to, to add it to our stack, you know, how many grams we can have, it, it's kind of confusing. It's not in milligrams, it's not in grams, which we're all used to, or in tablespoons, teaspoons. It's in a... a a unit of measurement called Scoville Thermal Units. And it's also in heat units, or just HU. And so you typically would want to look for a, a label or a dosage amount, a serving amount, between 40,000 to 80,000 heat units, or Scoville units, if you will, um, taking two to three times a day. Um, next we have fat transporters. That's the next pillar. Okay, so so far the first pillar was all about releasing fat out of the cells. The second pillar was about starting to burn those calories that were released out of the cells, right? Now this third pillar is very similar to the second one in terms of not all of those, those um, fat cells were burned up. So there's some leftovers and we can start to Transport. We can start this third pillar of transporting that fat into the mitochondria, where the leftover fat cells are going to start to be burned up. And when that that fat cell is transported into mitochondria, it has to be transported. You know, kind of a VIP pass um, in terms of being transported. It can't be transported by free will, meaning the body doesn't do it on a, on a normal basis. And um, how it can be transported to the mitochondria is through carnitine. Okay, and carnitine is a, a amino acid-like molecule, and it transports that fat right into the mitochondria, where the mitochondria is kind of like a powerhouse that's going to burn that fat and use it as fuel. Okay, so carnitine is a great, great, great supplement to throw into our arsenal. Um, we're going to want to take two to three grams two to three times a day. Okay, that was a fat transporter. On to, so those were like the first three pillars. Now this fourth pillar is a little different and it, it might be, I don't know, in my opinion, the most powerful one because where the first three pillars, they, they're powerful in, in that you, you store fat and then you burn the fat, right? Those three pillars help aid in burning the fat. But this fourth pillar is a fat stopper, meaning that fat never has an opportunity to be stored. So the burning of it, you know, store and then 
um, burn is unnecessary. It just burned right away. It never is, is stored. And um, an example of this, and it's, it's probably not the best example, but it just came into my mind. You know, I, I have a dog, and the first year I had my dog, he's a Doberman, a big dog. First year I had him, I, it was right in the winter time, and so I live in Minnesota. You know, I, min, the, the winters are ridiculous. Negative 20, negative 30 with wind chill is not uncommon. So when I let my dog out, I just let him out, let him run around, do his business, you know, go to the bathroom, and then I let him back in. And I was doing this the first winter I ever had him. Let him out, let him in, let him out, let him in. And at the end of that winter, as you can imagine, there was more dog crap than grass. When all, the, you know, when all the snow melted, it was just pure crap everywhere. And I had garbage bags and garbage bags full of dog crap. I, I couldn't even use like a, a plastic bag. I had to take two like snow shovels. It was, it was a lot of crap. And so the point I'm trying to make here is if I would have just picked up the dog poop every single time he went, then it would have been a lot less work in the long run. Whereas at the very end of winter, in the beginning of spring, I had you know, spent hours and hours and hours picking up all this dog crap, filling up garbage bags. It was just a lot of work. So let's reduce that, you know, let's eliminate that right at the beginning. Same with our fat. Let's just cut that fat off right away so it never has an opportunity to be stored in those fat cells. Okay, it's a lot harder to get rid of fat. So let's just eliminate it right at the, right at the beginning. So, so the, the ingredient that's going to help us stop this fat is called conjugated linoleic acid, CLA for short. You're going to see it in, in CLA form more than the long, long version of it. So CLA, it stops the fat. It helps promote that, um, um, it, it helps burn fat right at the source rather than let it be stored, okay? Uh, take one to three grams, two to three times a day, throughout the day. That, now that one is, is one that you're not going to necessarily want to take right before your workout. Um, it's it's, it's, it's kind of fat-based. It, it's a type of fat. It's an you know, essential amino fatty, fatty acid, if you will. So you don't want to take those fatties right before your workout because it slows down the digestion process. You don't really want stuff in your stomach when you're lifting. So um, take it throughout the day, but not right before your workout or right after your workout. Don't, don't do that. Last but not least, gene activators. This is the fifth pillar. Um, not necessarily like a, a, a die-hard fat burner, but there is some benefits to taking uh, fish oil. Fish oil is going to activate particular genes that help promote fat burning processes, okay? Fish oils are omega-3 fatty acids. They are going to, uh, they're going to be consistent of EPA and DHA. It's going to help promote that calorie burning, but it also has other benefits. Um, increase your brain function. It's going to lubricate your joints. It's going to help your recovery process. Um, it's also going to elevate muscle growth. So definitely a great thing to throw into the arsenal, two to three grams, two to three times a day. And um, one thing, it just clicked in my head, guys, CLA is, is it not only does it, it stop fat, but it actually promotes muscle growth, lean muscle growth. So it's a very, very, very great um, ingredient to throw in. That's just one main point I had forgot, but it's definitely good to know. So we have the fat stoppers, we have our gene activators. So that's what I got for you, man. Kevin, I, I appreciate the question. I hope this helps um, give you a, a better understanding, a greater overview of, of fat burning supplements. And the reason why I, I, I wanted to format it this way is, as I mentioned, a lot of products these days have 50 million different ingredients in there. You don't need all that. You don't need a splash of sugar, a splash of this, splash of that. You know, you don't know, you don't need all these things in there. If you can understand the process of building a very strong fat build or fat burning stack and understanding, okay, do I have my fat stoppers, my fat releasers, my gene activators, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to be able to just go to the store, buy CLA, boom, got that. Buy carnitine, boom, got that. Green tea extract, you drink it throughout the day. You know, my fish oils and you have these supplements and maybe you, Maybe you, you just start on carnitine 
Okay, take it for a few weeks, see how you feel. Maybe you feel fine, that's great. Then you, you add CLA, you throw CLA, you know, I'm, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not feeling good from this. Take it out, right? Rather than taking a supplement that has 50 million ingredients in it and not knowing what the cause of that dizziness is or that nauseousness, whatever it may be. So you can break it up. And these are the main ingredients that you are, you're gonna find in those, um, those fat burners, but they oftentimes will lace it with other things. If it's a powder, they might throw you know, dyes and sugars and all this other crap in there, um, especially if it's really mainstream like some of those brands. So, Kevin, dude, great question, man. I appreciate it. Uh, feel free to shoot me another one at any time. Do my best to um, address it and bring it up so that everyone can view it. Um, as for everyone else, thank you for watching. Till next time, guys. God bless. Take care. I'm out.